Hello and welcome to part 6 of Firefox OS programming. We concluded the last part by adding a theme to a link and I showed you how you can create your own thing, uh, themes and how to add them to different elements. In this part I'll show you more capabilities jQuery Mobile offers you to render links and to handle navigation. But first let's remove this style and the line break here, the data theme, so that we have a consistent look and feel. OK. If you look at other apps you can see that they most of the time they don't have text on the buttons but they have icons. So how can jQuery Mobile give us icons? jQuery Mobile offers you a set of 19 predefined icons that you can use in buttons. How can we do this? Well, let's go to our example and add another data attribute. And this attribute is called data icon and I give it the value of one of the 19 predefined icons, for example, home. I save the file, reload it in the simulator, and you can see a home icon appears here on the left of the button. You can also control the position of the icon by adding another data attribute and this attribute is called data icon pos. You can use either top, left, button, right or no text. So for example let's use right. Data icon pos is right. Save the file. Reload it in the simulator and you can see the icon appears on the right. If I use top, it should appear on the top of the text. OK. If I use button, it should appear at the button. OK. Now, what is no text? As the name suggests, the text will disappear and you will just have the icon. So let's save the file, reload it in the simulator, and as you can see, the whole text appears. jQuery Mobile renders this button as a nice small button. Let's also use uh, buttons with the attribute no text for these other links. So we go to the second button. The data icon for this button should be, let's say, phone. It's another predefined icon. And the data icon pause should also be no text. And the last one, this also works with links. Data icon. Now we use mail and data icon pass, no text. Now if I reload, if I save this file and reload it in the simulator, it should give us three icons with no text. Let's see if this works. Yeah. Now we have three icons, home, phone and mail. We can click them and check query mobile renders them very pretty, I think. If you wonder what predefined icons there are, I have them here for you in this command. Well, home, delete, plus, arrow u, arrow d, check, gear, grid, star, custom, arrow r, arrow l, minus, Refresh, Forward, Back, Alert, Info and Search. 
you can also look them up in the jQuery mobile documentation and just Google jQuery mobile data attributes and you'll come to this page and here you have the description of the data icons you can use. Let's go back to our example and to the app in the simulator. Well, usually these links are not placed um, are placed side by side. So what we see here is not very good. What can we do to place these icons side by side? Okay, let's go back to our example and there's another data attribute called data inline. Let's set this to true and set it to true for all three links. First input element, second input element and of course our link. All three now have the attribute data-inline true. Save the file and let's reload it in the simulator. Now we can see all icons appear side by side. As we develop our example further in the next parts, we will use three icons. One of them will be home, always to go to the main page, and the other two will be arrow left and arrow right, just to come to the next page and to the previous page. So we will prepare this here. Let's go to our example. The data icon here is on our first link, this means the link on the left will be arrow L for oh, I'll copy it just to be sure arrow L for arrow left and the counterpart arrow right for arrow right here the last link and in the middle we'll use home as our home button. So if I save the file, reload it, I should have a structure for navigation. OK, go back, go forward, go to the home page. Usually a navigation like this is located always at the bottom of a page or at the top I think but we'll use this navigation at the button so how do we get this navigation to the button of course we'll add it to the footer element and remove the text you see here so let's go back to the example and copy these three links not including the heading, just the three uh, navigation elements. I copy them and paste them over the text in the footer. I will remove this text and add the navigation here in our footer element. And of course I remove the navigation here in the content part of our app. I save the file, reload it in the simulator and as you can see the navigation now is at the button. Of course we should also center the navigation elements so we also copy the diff align center and use it within the footer. Of course we also close our diff. Save the file, reload and now you can see the buttons are centered. Go back, go to the home page, go forward. To prepare ourselves for the next part we will slightly modify our example now. 
by convention you should replace the header element with a div element with the data role of header and close the div. Also you should replace the content element with a div element with the data role of content. And last but not least, oh uh, sorry, I made a mistake. Content replaced by div with the data role of content. And this is the end of the div. And last but not least, the footer element should be replaced should also be replaced by a div element with the data role of footer. Now let's see how this looks like in our simulator. Okay, something changed here. Our footer is not at the bottom anymore. Why this? Well, this is very simple. If we look at the style we developed earlier, we developed a style for the footer and we told the footer to be always positioned at the bottom, bottom left. Okay, but because we've removed the whole footer element from our HTML file, this style is not recognized anymore. Instead, we can use a standard attribute of jQuery Mobile and this element is called data position with the value of fixed in this case so that the footer element always remains at the bottom of our page. I save the file reload it in the simulator and you can see now the footer is at the bottom. This concludes part 6 of Firefox OS programming. In the next part I'll tell you more about navigation, how it is handled and what else we can expect from jQuery Mobile. Thank you.